Hello. I'm now. The elephant. I am traveling the world on a cruise ship. Elephants never forget and I'm going to go on an unforgettable journey with you. I am continuing my travels from French Polynesia to Australia. I will be three weeks at sea on the Ovation of the Seas ship. I'm starting off my unforgettable journey in the North Star Observation Capsule above the ship. This is a time-lapse video. It was so cool to have a 360-degree view of the world from 300 feet above sea level while we were in the middle of the ocean. Time to check out Adventure Ocean. It's a fun place where junior cruisers can meet children their age and pass the time on board with games, themed parties, and crafts. Rip Cord by I Fly is a skydiving simulator. I got to do this three times. It was so much fun. There are butterflies on the wall that fly when you touch them. For dinner one night, we barbecued at sea. So much good food. There was a really big announcement on board. Royal Caribbean announced they are building a bigger ship called the Icon of the Seas. When they finish building the ship, I will have an awesome adventure to look forward to. What a great set of slides. The crew was power washing the ship deck one morning when I woke up really early. Washi washi. The first five days at sea are over, and we have docked in Napier, New Zealand. New Zealand's Napier Port is the home port for a vintage car club. They display their beautiful automobiles next to our cruise ship docked in New Zealand's Hawke's Bay region. I got to go on a Hawke's Bay cycle trail tour on an electric bike. It was a 15 km 9 mile electric assisted pedaling journey through Napier's Naharanga Trail. We traveled across Hawke's Bay's stunning coastline and stopped to look at the Tutakuri River. These ever-shifting rivers provided a means of transport, connection, trade, and abundant opportunities for fishing and harvesting food. The swampy wetlands and estuary between the restless Tukituki and Garuoro rivers are teeming with life and are breeding grounds for numerous species of birds and fish. Our bike ride ended with a stop for lunch after a long ride. We got to eat outside in the beautiful weather. Yum! We took the bus back to town. Look at these trees. Unlike the United States, New Zealand requires you to look in the opposite direction when crossing the road. Time to get back on the ship to get my portrait taken. The next day we docked in Wellington, New Zealand. This tugboat was having fun doing a 360 degrees turn while waiting for our ship to dock. Once we disembarked, I went on a Lord of the Rings tour. We stopped at many different stops to see where the Lord of the Rings movies were made. We stopped at the Great River of Anjouan and Isengard Gardens, the places where the movie was filmed. So the Ring of Power has been found, it was under your very nose, yet you did not have the wit to see it. The love of the Halfling's Leap slowed your mind. The trees in New Zealand are amazing. We then drove to Kaidok Regional Park, Te Aikea Maui. We crossed over the swing bridge to see an additional movie set. The trees in New Zealand are amazing. Australian tree fern can grow from 12 to 20 feet and live 250 years. Each character's height is represented by this pole. Big structures were built in the woods to bring Rivendell to life, which were all removed after filming. A New Zealand parrot. We then had spectacular views from Te Aikea Maui North Island, Motukurangi.
our ship. We also stopped at Eighth Waiter Cave, which was a mini museum of props and artwork from different movie sets. When we returned to the ship, there was a piano player in the elevator. Here are all our towel animals so far. Next stop is Picton, New Zealand for the Marlborough train tour. This historic Passchendaele train left the town of Blenheim and arrived at Seddon. This train is an historic World War I steam locomotive. Mount Tapuya Wenuku is in the background. The train ride was 45 minutes each way. We arrived at Seddon, which is a small town with a population of about 600 people. This town was named after a former Prime Minister of New Zealand. Time to head back. We passed through the Dashwood Pass into the beautiful Awatir Valley and a sea of vineyards with the snow-capped peak of Mount Tapuya Wenuku. During the cruise from New Zealand to Australia, I watched a belly flop contest and a Michael Jackson thriller performance by the guests. We landed in Australia around 6 a.m. to a beautiful sunrise and cruised past the Cindy Opera House. It is an open-air performing arts center in Sydney and has a number of venues. The building is widely considered one of the world's most famous and distinctive buildings and a masterpiece of 20th century architecture. On October 20, 1973, Queen Elizabeth II formally opened the building designed by Danish architect J.R.N. Utzon but completed by an Australian architectural team headed by Peter Hall. The Sydney Harbour Bridge is a steel through arch bridge spanning Sydney Harbour from the central business district to the North Shore. Until recently, the bridge was the world's longest single-span steel arch bridge. Time to disembark and see a quick view of Sydney before we fly to the next adventure. On an open-air bus, I did a hop-on, hop-off tour of the local area. These buildings are awesome with the plants growing on them. Our trip is done. See you on the next adventure.